my years in the financial arena, I've rarely met a newcomer who hadn't already experienced some degree of success, either paper trading the market or opening and trading a demo account. But once they start trading their own money, the success they had trading the demo account is not so easy to replicate trading their own money. What tends to happen is that they suffer from one of the four trading fears. And this will be the focus of this chapter. Let's talk a little bit about trading fears and how it can sabotage your trading. Your trading fears are largely contained to four kinds of fears. There's the fear of being wrong. And there's the fear of losing money. And then there's the fear of missing out on a move in the market. And then there's the fear of leaving money on the table. Much of our fear comes from the way our brain is designed. So let's just take a quick look at the structure of our brain. Our brain consists of three centers. There's the reptile part of our brain. It's about 500 million years old. It wakes up, up in the morning. It reminds our heart to beat. Then there's our midbrain. It's only about 300 million years old. It regulates temperature. It houses our emotions and governs our flight or fight response that keeps us alive in the face of danger. And then finally, there's the cortex, and this is where the problem is. 100 million years old, and this is where our rational thoughts take place. And it's in the cortex that we need to go to work. If we want to change, we need to activate the cortex. The path to change doesn't require large steps and grand gestures. Rather, in my experience, you are far more likely to succeed by taking small, incremental steps. Because large steps tend to generate fear. And when you have fear, your cortex part of the brain will shut down. If instead you take small, incremental steps towards your goal, you are far more likely to succeed because the cortex doesn't detect any discernible change in your behavior. The journey to becoming a winning trader can largely be outlined as follows. You need to learn to execute without fear or hesitation. You need to accept that you will get stopped out when you're wrong. You also need to accept that the only way to really accumulate profits on your account is to let your winners run. And finally, the fourth and probably the most difficult step is to push your winners. Or in other words, you add to your winning positions. My objective here is to remove the fear so you can just play the game over and over without hesitation and without any kind of doubt. Because when we have an edge, all that remains is to take each trade as it comes without prejudging whether it's going to be a good or a bad trade. Can technical analysis help us with that? Well, it certainly can, but technical analysis does not predict the future and neither does fundamental analysis for that matter. All that technical analysis and fundamental analysis does, it says that there's a higher probability of one outcome or one thing happening over another. And that is our edge. Over a batch of trades, technical analysis predicts the future very well. But don't forget that on the level of just one single trade, the outcome is still perfectly random. We don't know if it's going to be a winning trade or a losing trade. If we have a technical pattern which is correct 70% of the time, it stands to reason that it's obviously going to be wrong 30% of the time. So on the next trade, we don't know if it's going to be one of the 70% or one of the 30%. So as traders, we require two levels of beliefs. One, at the level of one trade, we really need to believe that the outcome is random, that we don't know what's going to happen next. But at the level of a batch of trades, we need to appreciate and believe that there is a predictable outcome. Most of us will have no trouble playing the coin game mentioned in the previous chapter. But most of us have a major problem following a simple set of trading rules. The difference may be simple, but it's profound. In the coin game, all of us have believed since childhood that the outcome of a tossing of a coin is random. 
when the head turns up instead of the tail, which we had guessed, it causes no pain. We don't feel any discomfort. However, in trading, we feel that we know what's going to happen next. And when it doesn't, we experience major pain. And here's my lesson to you. All trading pain can be removed by really, really believing that in one trade, anything can happen. In contrast, the amount that we believe that we can predict the outcome on any one trade will be directly proportional to the extent that we fail as a trader. And I want to repeat that. The extent that we believe that we can predict the outcome of the next trade will be directly proportionate to the extent that we fail as traders and speculators. The expectation that we know what's going to happen next is the source of all trading pain. Many people start to trade knowing very little about the market and they do very well. In the beginning of their trading career, they have no expectations of being able to predict what the market is going to do next because they have little or no experience. But after a few months of trading, they slowly become gurus and now they feel confident that they know exactly what's going to happen next and they can predict it. They think they can predict the future on a trade by trade basis. And slowly and gradually the pain starts to creep in and they find that trading errors of hesitation and picking the trades start to surface. And so now it's time for another trading book or another internet trading system or even another trading course. But unfortunately, this is not the solution. The source of all trading pain is caused by the thought that we know what's going to happen next. When the outcome is poor in relation to our expectations, a wave of pain arrives to our physical bodies. And the most common trading error is that of hesitation, of picking trades, maybe let one trade go, but pick another one because it looks better. And that will result in pain. I don't want to go all Freudian psychology on you here, but I want to tell you how our minds work because it has two distinct characteristics. One characteristic is to associate one moment with the previous moment. Another characteristic is to avoid at any cost both physical and emotional pain. When we feel as traders that we can predict the future on a trade by trade basis, then emotional pain will be the result. Let's say that uh, we are trading a system with a 66% hit rate. So we know that out of every three trades, we can expect two winners and potentially one loser. Our job is still to take each trade without fear or hesitation. So let's say that the first trade and the second trade is a winner. But sooner or later, inevitability will set in and a bad trade is going to come along. And if we believe that we know what's going to happen next, and that is the case for most traders, we are going to experience pain when that loss arrives. So now the next trade comes along. And when it's time to execute, our mind remembers the pain associated with a bad one one trade ago. Don't forget, the mind is wired to avoid pain. So when we find ourselves hesitating, it is because of the pain from the previous trade. In many people, this can be very subtle, but they will make excuses for not taking the next trade. Many traders will avoid looking at charts for weeks at this stage. Many will go out and buy trading books or going on a trading course. Many will busy themselves in other projects instead of dealing with the trading pain. Not so long ago, I had lunch with a stockbroker. She told me that she saw a lot of the great technical setups that I had taught her, but she always seemed to be too busy in admin to trade them. And as I sat in front of her, I thought that this was a subtle manifestation of avoiding the pain of being wrong in her trading arena. Let me make this really clear to you. Forget about chasing the Holy Grail. There is no method out there which can predict with 100% accuracy the market on a day-by-day -day or moment-by-moment -moment basis. There's just too many variables around for that to happen. 
So am I saying that we should forget about working on our analysis and try to improve our results? Of course I'm not saying that. But once we realize at the level of one trade that the market cannot be predicted, we can certainly work hard to get an overall better edge. Unfortunately, some of the best analysts that I know are extremely poor traders. Consider the Elliott Wave guru who has spent 10 years studying wave analysis. How easy do you think that it is for this person to accept and understand that on one trade the outcome is random? Furthermore, the Elliott Wave analyst will have lots of their self-worth and self-esteem tied up in the certainty of the prediction because that's what Elliott Wave analysis is all about. If it goes wrong, then that's the source of major pain. Now, I'm not saying Elliott Wave analysis can't be useful in your trading. It can be used to build an excellent, in the mark, an excellent edge in the market. But what is your objective? Do you want to be right? Or do you want to make money trading? And that's the question you have to answer yourself. The biggest problem I have in teaching short-term trading techniques is the tendency for people to jump from one trading system to another. Many traders change systems after one losing trade. They largely optimize mentally to what worked yesterday, but it rarely works that way. And just because it didn't work yesterday doesn't mean it's going to work today and vice versa. And they tend to get caught up in a cycle until the pain is so much that they give up or they simply run out of cash. Having the discipline to stick to one trading plan through thick and thin is quite a business. We have to ask ourselves now is can trading discipline be built? Or is it simply just a case of one has it and the other one doesn't have it? Of course it can be built. Of course you can build trading discipline. And when you got discipline, you don't need discipline anymore to complete the task. I don't need to grit my teeth to go to the gym every day, but I certainly did in the beginning. So this is what I want you to consider. First, you need to decide upon a trading system which details mechanically the entry, the exit, the money management, the position sizing, and any adding to your position that you may want to encounter. It should be simple and straightforward as we are in a discipline building phase rather in the system building exercise. I'll make a recommendation of a trading system that I use myself in the Forex market every single day. The second thing you have to do is you have to resolve to follow this system for a batch of trades without changing the parameters and without changing the rules. And 30 trades seems to be a good number to aim for. Now this can be a very difficult exercise and probably the most difficult thing that you've ever had to do. But I promise you that if you persist, you will reap the rewards. You don't even have to do it with real money. You can trade this on a demo account. What's important is that you do it. What's important is that you begin executing a batch of 30 trades with discipline and out hesitation. It's a process. It's a process very similar to personal trainers that we see in gyms these days. Personal trainers are in the discipline business and they're not in the exercise business. They just want to make sure that you show up and you do the exercises. And largely after 30 days, you don't even need them anymore. The most bizarre thing about this exercise is how the resistance just seems to melt away, disappears after somewhere between 10 and 15 trades. So I want to say to you is this. You're only about 10 to 15 trades from being the trader that you always wanted to be. It's that close. After those 10, 15 trades, all the resistance has melted away. And each one that I have ever taught this method begins to execute their trades without fear, without hesitation, simply just playing a game. It's still very much a difficult step to make and pretty much impossible without taking the time to study the art of being present. It will be impossible for you to complete the 30 trades exercise without building your ability to be in the present moment because otherwise you're going to think that the last trade was a losing trade and you're going to worry if the next trade is going to lose you money. And you can perfectly do the 30 trade exercise using a demo account. 
However, to emotionally get the most out of the exercise, you should trade it with real money, even if it's using the smallest possible stake size you can. The goal of the exercise is not to make money. The goal of the exercise is for you to build discipline, trading discipline. The goal is to create a foundation from where you can develop a prosperous trading future. Thank you.